I mark here at 911 Rapid Response. We also build commercial vehicles at Rapid Response, and this is just a super duty that I'm gonna show you quick on what we did on this vehicle. This on the roof has the Akari mount. We're a stocking dealer for Akari. It also has the Whalen Century 16 inch bar that's mounted directly on top of it. We had to remove the feet from the mini bar and mount the mini bar directly right under that Akari mount. So it has a real nice low profile look. There's no mount foot that's really sticking out on top of it. This is a nice way to permanent mount a mini bar without actually drilling through the roof of your vehicle. The other thing that we have on the front here for some lower level front warning is a set of Cobra T6s from Phoenix. They're surface mounted, they're black, they kind of blend in. Gives a lower in the front uh, for some lower front warning lights here on this vehicle. On the inside of the vehicle, we actually have a 1500 watt inverter. Now, what we see a lot of times that happens wrong here um, in rapid response when other vehicles come in and uh, we look at it that were built elsewhere is inverters require a lot of power to properly drive that unit. Um, so we'll do a uh, analysis on what size wire gauge has to be, what size fuse has to be, and that type of thing. So in this case, this is a 1500 watt inverter, has a max output of about 3000 watts, so it can spike 3000. So for instance, if you're gonna run a Sawzall, uh, that offense where you first turn it on, it's gonna spike it maybe to 2000, which would be fine, and then drop it back down to maybe an operating of eight to 900 watts only. So that's perfectly fine, that's what the inverter's made for. What's very important is can, number one, can the truck handle it? And number two, the equipment that you're going to use for it, proper wire gauge and that type of thing. So I'm gonna show you what you get with rapid response and our type of wiring here uh, with our customization. This has a three-aught wire in it, has a custom loom across it, shrink, root, shrink wrapped on the end here with, uh, with the tubing material. Makes it real nice and clean. There's no open split loom on this for, for any wire to fall out for it to, to ever be exposed. In our fabrication shop here at Rapper Response, it's nice. We have a nice uh, aluminum bracket that's custom made, actually goes actually off this post um, right here that holds the battery in. Inline, big inline fuse material. Goes around, goes into a continuous uh, use solenoid, which is very important. Um, we see this error a lot of times where it's actually like a starter solenoid and, and that cannot be. It has to be what we call continuous use solenoid. Uh, real nice clean wiring for the activation wires which then go inside to the cab switching. So this goes the whole way inside of the truck. If you follow me around to this side, I'll show you where it goes. It goes through the firewall, through, through a grommet, comes back through the side, and then it comes up through underneath this back seat. So we have the nice big inverter here plugs on it you can plug anything into it that they want comes in real nice real clean um, real sleek install just gives that customer the ability to plug in um, some LED scene lighting lets them plug in like I said uh, a coffee pot if they want to I mean there's all kinds of, of uses that you can that you can use with uh, having 110 volts in your vehicle in this vehicle we're just using the standard upfitter switches to turn on the emergency lights this is just one of the many commercial vehicles that we build here at rapid response just a nice overview that I wanted to show you today. Please check us out at 911rapidresponse.com. Make sure you check out our other videos on YouTube and make sure you check us out on social media on Facebook.